Hello and welcome to the 19th topic in this course. We're moving on to looking at algorithms today, um, a very, very important topic in this course. We're looking at algorithms which crop up in maths, they crop up in computing, and it may be a term that's unfamiliar to you, um, so let's just define it. There's a few ways to define it really, but the, the key point I want to get across is that an algorithm is a set of ordered instructions which solve a problem. That's sort of a key bit. They, they, have, they consist of instructions, so it could be code, it could be uh, something written like a recipe is an algorithm, an instruction manual is an algorithm, your end result is you get a cake or you get you build a piece of furniture. Um, you also get algorithms of course on, on in software on, on the internet. So you have so an example I can think of on YouTube, you have all these related videos and YouTube has an algorithm that finds these videos for you. It looks at your history, it looks at what you might be into and it shows related videos on the side and obviously Google has them to display search results and what they all show in common they're all ordered instructions and they solve a problem they have an end result and that's why often they're um, likened to functions functions in code have they're like a little packet of code which give you an end result it could be a number it could be just a task that's done and um, all these algorithms sort of they share three things they're precise they're well defined and they are finite so let's just have a look at these in a bit more detail. When I talk about precision, what I'm talking about, we're looking at the fact that we get an answer back. We, we Our problem is solved. So precision, we're looking at the fact that we actually get accurate answers. Our problem is solved. Um, however, you've got to be slightly careful. You've got to look at it in terms of efficiency. Right, so we're looking at it in terms of efficiency, but more specifically, we're looking at it in terms of time efficiency. Um, you don't want an algorithm that takes forever. For example, if your algorithm in your sat nav perhaps, um, so it finds you the quickest route to get somewhere and there's billions of combinations, you don't want it to take a day to find a route for you, you want it to take a minute or so. And that's why algorithms are built with time efficiency, they're, they're designed so that they are as quick as possible. And if that means that you lose some precision, your answer isn't as exact as you want, then that's okay because it's not wasting your time. You don't if you, every time you Google something, you don't want the algorithm to take ten minutes to find the list of results. I mean, you may get results that are more precise to you, but you're not going to wait ten minutes. You want to wait half a second or however long it takes. So that's quite important. We talk about time efficiency um, in terms of algorithms, but also precision. Okay, so we also want algorithms to be well defined, and this means that they have a set input or inputs and set outputs. So, um, inputs slash outputs, and we also write this as i slash o, in case you see that notation. Um, and I can think of a couple of examples. So, um, first of all, if we perhaps look at um, an example, if we, if we have two inputs, 2 and 8, and we have an output of 16, what we can see, we can see the algorithm is just multi multiplied them together, that's quite simple, you can see 2 and 8 times together is 16, that's what the algorithm's done. It gets slightly more complex when we have um, uh, e.g., so if our input is uh, 16, and our output is 4 and minus 4, you may realize that what we're doing here we're doing the square root of 16 um, and what that means is we've got two outputs because the square root of 16 can be 4, 4 times 4 is 16 but also minus 4, minus 4 squared is also 16 so we get two outputs in this case but usually we would have one output but several inputs perhaps or maybe even no inputs you can have a null input where you get nothing inputted but you have an output too like a random number could be an example of a null input Okay, moving on to looking at what we're talking about when we say finite. Um, hopefully it's the simplest of the three, but we just want it to not last forever, so it's not going to be an infinite loop. Um, there'll be a point where the algorithm cuts off. If it can't find an answer, it will stop itself. It's not going to go on forever and waste your time, because that would just cause a runtime error, but we'll look at errors in another video. So usually algorithms are executed by a computer, but when you're planning them down, so we usually um, show algorithms in two ways. First of which is pseudocode, and the second of which is flow diagrams or flow charts. Same thing. So first of all, let's look at what pseudocode is. It's probably a good time to mention pseudocode. You'll probably use it in your controlled assessments, perhaps, or you have the option to. And in your exam, they may ask you to express something, an algorithm in pseudocode or flow diagram or either. 
so it's up to you which one you use but what pseudocode is it's basically a high level informal description of code so when we talk about high level programming languages we'll look at this in the next video I think or yeah the next video um, but what it means is just mainly written English because it's designed for humans to read a, a, pro a computer will never run in pseudocode because it just doesn't make sense and this is an example of pseudocode and um, what it, this code's doing it's um, basically adding or ca adding up all the values in the list and if we actually did this in Python if we if this was our plan and we put it into code it would look like this um, so basically the pseudocode is sort of up to you it's for planning it doesn't actually matter what you write in it it's like I said it's almost completely written English but as a few conventions I would advise you stick to I've always when I assign something a list or a variable I always do this little arrow that's just something I've done but I don't think you need to you could do equals you could just write list is this or yeah is instead and then for loops and functions and procedures I always do so if I'm setting a for loop here um, I'll do n4 at the end that's just a convention I've got used to doing but pseudocode is sort of up to you as long as it can be read and interpreted quite easily then it doesn't really matter um, so the second way is with flow diagrams and flow diagrams are pictorial representation representations of code so it's basically just like a visual version of pseudocode and this suits some people more than others they're usually less detailed um, but it doesn't mean you will lose marks it just it might be easier for some people to do I've always preferred using pseudocode but that may be different for other people so basically I'd recommend you use um, a mix of four blocks of flow diagram um, and I mentioned these terms sequence, selection and iteration. These are three different types of program flow control which we'll look at in a few videos time. So first of all you have the start block and this denotes the start of your program or the start of an algorithm and it has only one output, it has no inputs. Um, yeah, I mean if, if, if you're doing an algorithm with an input you do another block below it, you'd have a process block which is here. So the decision block is the selection stage for selection block but like I say I'll talk about that in more detail in a couple of videos time and it, it makes a boolean choice it has one input and two outputs and a process block represents an operation carried out such as what the algorithm actually does and it has an input and an output and so this the process would be the start of your algorithm but not the start of the actual flow diagram and then you also have the end which just wraps up quite nicely and it's the opposite of the start symbol it has one input and zero outputs um, so that's it for today's video, um, I'm trying to make it as quick as possible, uh, we're looking at uh, programming languages in the next one, so hopefully it was useful and I'll see you in the next video, thank you.